Alrighty, so I just got back from a run. It's really hot here in Norway these days. And so I wanted to give you a few tips on how to tolerate or how to deal with the heat when training in, in summer. So I think the number one tip is to, you know, do what you can to avoid the heat or maybe avoid the sun exposure to the extent that you can, all right? So for a lot of people that means running in the morning or perhaps in the evening. Personally, I'm uh, not a big fan of neither of those, so I, I prefer running during the middle of the day here in Norway. It's usually not too bad though, so we can usually tolerate the midday even in the summer, but right now it's really, really hot. We got a heat wave and it's pretty um, horrible. If you can't adjust the time of day when you run, there's a few other things you can do to, to protect yourself from the heat. Well, you can wear white clothing, right? Clothing in general uh, will keep you warm, but it will, uh, which is not good. But on the other hand, it will also protect you against the sun. And the direct sunlight on your skin can actually heat you up more than the ambient temperature. So um, putting on a white t-shirt, maybe a hat, uh, protecting your skin against uh, getting a sunburn, uh, whether that means having to use uh, sunscreen, which is better than, you know, getting burnt, you know, uh, even though probably not optimally for health to, to use a lot of sunscreen, but it's, it's better than being burnt. If you can't use sunscreen or be in the shade, um, wearing long sleeves, stuff like that, uh, that's sort of the number one tip. Just try and do your best to sort of avoid the sun or be in the shade or wear clothing. And of course, if you're in the shade or if there's no extreme sun exposure going on, maybe it's cloudy, then taking off clothing will also be a very good strategy. Like right now, just taking off your shirt, running shorts only. Um, for girls, you know, just a very thin top, short tights. Um, you wanna have as much skin exposed as possible unless there's that direct sun. Same goes for the hat. I think if there's a lot of sun, the hat will keep your head cooler, a white hat. But if it's cloudy, then it's better to keep the hat off and just let your head air out. Next tip is gonna be slowing down, okay? So just slow down a little bit when it's really hot. Um, your heart has to work harder because your blood goes to your skin for cooling, okay? So it goes to your skin so that it's closer to the air and can cool down that way. That's called convective cooling. But you're also gonna be sweating a lot which is also good for cooling your cooling you down. Sweating is a, is, a, is a positive adaptation to running in the heat. The more your body adapts to the heat, the more you'll sweat, actually. And the faster you'll start sweating when heading out on a run. So uh, a lot of people think sweating means that you're not fit. Oh, I sweat so much. Sweating is, is a positive adaptation. So uh, the blood goes to your skin, uh, you start sweating, which means that sweating means that you're gonna be losing water, losing sweat. And that means that there's less blood in the body. And less blood means that the heart actually has to work harder to pump the same amount of blood around to reach the muscles to, to deliver oxygen and fuel. So that means your heart rate will actually be a little bit higher for the same work effort. And so you wanna keep that in mind. And also, you know, your brain uh, tells your body that, you know, it's hot, I don't want to work too hard today, uh, please slow down. And it tells you this by just, just feeling fatigued, all right? So fatigue is actually more of an emotion than it is uh, an actual state in the muscle. Listen to that message, allow yourself to just slow down a little bit in the heat. If you're going for an easier run, there's no point in making it hard. Just go easy and go long, okay? So slow down. Uh, relax, don't worry too much about pace in the heat. And when it comes to workouts or racing even, uh, you gotta keep in mind that you are not going to be able to perform at your normal peak capacity. Okay, so as the heat goes up, your race times will be slower. There's just, it's a physiological fact. You cannot evade this. Uh, you can of course train to be better fit in the hot weather by training in the heat, which is good, but you are, inevitably going to slow down a little bit more than usual in a race if it's very hot. Same goes for hard workouts. So just give yourself a little bit of leeway, right? Uh, again, just slow down a little bit. Just allow yourself to run a little bit slower than usual. Third tip today uh, is just going to be hydration, okay? So you have got to focus on hydration uh, in the heat. 
Uh, well, you, I just told you, right, how uh, you sweat mm -hmm. and this sweat means that you're losing blood volume and you become dehydrated, your body tissues, you generally become dehydrated everywhere. And this not only leads to a decrease in performance, so it's like an acute effect if you're out on a run. And if it's a long run, after about an hour in the heat, if you haven't taken in any fluids, you're going to be fairly dehydrated and this is going to affect your performance in that run negatively. Your heart rate is going to go up, your effort level is going to go up, your pace is going to slow down and it's overall going to be more stressful than it needs to be. And there's, there's no benefits of being dehydrated, right? You're, you don't actually get better at being dehydrated, you just get dehydrated. It's actually bad for your body and, uh, and, and can be even risky in extreme cases for your heart, etc. So, uh, taking water, um, per perhaps a little bit of salt even, on your actual runs during training sessions that are long or very hard. Make sure you hydrate during the session and most importantly, hydrate afterwards, okay? So you come home, make sure you drink, replenish those fluids, uh, maybe uh, some electrolytes if, because we lose also uh, minerals like sodium especially in our sweat. So it's good to replace that. But if you're already eating a lot of salt, uh, you probably don't need to add in more salt. But if you're eating very low salt or no salt, you might think about perhaps adding in some salt after uh, a hard, long run in the heat. In terms of knowing how much to uh, drink, you can weigh yourself before and after a session. And whatever the difference is, that's mostly water loss, okay? There's some fat and carbohydrate loss as well, but it's very, it's almost insignificant unless you're going very, very long. So whatever you see on the scale, the difference between pre and post workout naked weight, uh, that's your losses and then you need to replace those, uh, you know, within the next few hours. Uh, most of it probably immediately and then you can, you know, continue to drink a little bit over the next few hours to get in balance. All right, that's it. We'll wrap it up there. Um, protect yourself against the sun, avoid it if you can. Slow down and allow yourself to accept a little bit of a slower pace during workouts and races. And ultimately, make sure you hydrate well during hard and long sessions and also afterwards. That's it. If you're interested in coaching, check out my coaching website. There's a link in the description. We can do a consultation just on hydration, just on training in the heat if you want. Or we can set up a full coaching subscription where I uh, give you a customized training plan every month and we talk on Skype and all that good stuff. So check out my offers down below and follow me on Instagram and Strava as well. Links in the description. I hope you're doing well. Let me know in the comments what you do in the heat, how you like the heat personally. I, I, I prefer heat over cold. Uh, but uh, the best is just somewhere in the middle, I think. Thanks for watching. Bye.